Hello everyone. In previous class, we discussed about what is Hartley oscillators and coal pit oscillators and their workings. In this lecture, we will study about the mean bridge oscillator and quartz crystal oscillators and the reference of this presentation. So today's lecture we cover these two oscillator in detail form, mean bridge oscillators and quartz crystal oscillators. Okay, so let's start it with the topic one, the Beans Bridge Oscillators. The Beans Bridge Oscillators uses two RC network connected together to produce a sinusoidal oscillator. So, Beans Bridge Oscillators बनाने के लिए हम क्या करते हैं टू आर सी नेटवर्क को एक साथ कनेक्ट करते हैं इन दी आर सी ऑसिलेटर ट्यूटोरियल वी शो दैट अ नंबर ऑफ रजिस्टर एंड कैपेसिटर्स कैन बी कनेक्टेड टूगेदर विथ एन इन्वर्टिंग एम्पलीफायर टू प्रोड्यूस एन ऑसिलेटिंग सर्किट वन ऑफ द सिंपलेस्ट साइन वेव ऑसिलेटर्स विच यूज इज आर सी नेटवर्क in place of a conventional lc tuned tank circuit to produce a sinusoidal output waveform is called a wiens bridge oscillator the wiens bridge oscillator is also called because the circuit is based on a frequency selective form of the wheatstone bridge circuit the wiens bridge oscillator is a two stage rc coupled amplifier circuit that has good stability at its resonance frequency pichle wali class mein humne resonance bhi samjha tha ki kya hota hai to isme jo stability as well as resonance frequency ki jo hoti hai bahut hi achhi hoti hai in case of wien bridge low distortions and it's very easy to tune making it's a popular circuit as an audio frequency oscillators but the phase shift of the output signal is considerably different from the previous phase shift rc oscillator the beans bridge oscillator uses a feedback circuit consisting of a series rc circuit connected with a parallel rc of the same component value producing a phase delay or phase advance circuit depending upon the frequency at the resonant frequency fr the phase shift is 0 degree consider the circuit below so this is the circuit diagram for rc phase shift network is network ka use hum kyu karenge phase ko shift karne ke liye ya to delay karne ke liye ya phase advance karne ke liye so this circuit consist two combination of rc elements first r and c connected in series called the high pass filter and r and c connected in parallel called the low pass filter the above rc network consisting of series rc circuit connected to a parallel rc forming basically a high pass filter connected to a low pass filter producing a selective second order frequency dependent band pass filter with a high q factor q factor is called the quality factor at the selective frequency fr
So this is the oscillator output gain and phase shift diagram. The first one is called the output gain and second is called the phase shift diagram. It can be seen that at a very low frequencies the phase angle between the input and output signal is positive means phase advanced while at a high frequencies the phase angle become negative or called the phase delay. In the middle of these two points the circuit is at its resonance frequency means FR. Jahan pe hume zero point mil raha hai, usi ko hum resonant frequency FR bol rahe hai. With the two signals being in phase or zero degree, we can therefore define the resonant frequency point with the following expression. Next is our mean bridge oscillator frequency. So the frequency FR is equal to 1 upon 2 pi into RC. Where FR is the resonant frequency in Hertz, R is the resistance in Ohm and C is the capacitance in Farad. We said previously that the magnitude of the output voltage V out from the RC network is at its maximum value and equal to one third of the input voltage. V in to allow the oscillations to occur but why one third and not some other value in order to understand why the output from the RC circuits above need to be one third that is 0 0.333 into Vn. We have to consider the complex impedance Z is equal to R plus minus Jx of the two connected RC circuits. We know from our AC theory tutorial that the real part of the complex impedance is the resistance R while the imaginary part is the reactance X. As we are dealing with capacitor here, so the reactance part will be capacitive reactance Xc. Next is the RC network. If we redraw the above RC network as shown, we can clearly see that it consists of two RC circuits connected together with the output taken from their junction. Resistor R1 and capacitor C1 from the top series network while the resistor R2 and capacitor C2 from the bottom parallel network. Therefore, the total DC impedance of the series combination R1C1 we can call ZS and the total impedance of the parallel combination R2C2 we can call ZP as ZS and ZP are effectively connected together in series across the input Vn they form a voltage divider network with the output taken from across Zp as shown. Let's assume then that the component value of R1 and R2 are the same at 12 kilo ohm and capacitor C1 and C2 are the same at 3.9 nanofarad and the supply frequency F is 3.4 kilohertz. So in a series circuit, the total impedance of the series combinations of the resistor R1 and the capacitor C1 is simply R1 is equal to 12 kilo ohm but Xc is equal to 1 upon 2 pi into Fc. So Xc is equal to 1 upon 2 pi put the value of F and C. So 1 upon 2 pi. 3.4 kilohertz into 3.9 nanofarad so we get 12 kilo ohm the value of xc ye value humne apne man se liya hai aap chahe to kuch aur bhi value le sakte hain zaruri nahi hai yahi value le 
so finally the we know that the formula of impedance ZS is equal to under root of R square plus XC square put the value of these two so we get ZS is equal to 16,970 ohm or we can say that approximate 17 kilo ohm we know that with the supply frequency of 3.4 kilohertz the reactance of the capacitor is the same as the resistance of the resistor at 12 kilo ohm this then gives us an upper series impedance ZS of 17 kilo ohm for the lower parallel impedance at P as the two components are in parallel we have to treat this different differently because the impedance of the parallel circuit is influenced by this parallel combination next is parallel circuit so the total impedance of the lower parallel combinations with R2 and C2 is given by R is equal to 12 kilo ohm and X is equal to 12 kilo ohm. So 1 upon Z is equal to 1 upon R plus 1 upon XC. So we get Z is equal to 6000 or 6 kilo ohm. At the supply frequency of 3400 hertz or 3.4 kilohertz the combined DC impedance of the RC parallel circuit become 6 kilo ohm means R parallel to XC but the vector sum of this parallel impedance being calculated as R is equal to 6 kilo ohm and XC is equal to 6 kilo ohm in parallel so ZP is equal to we know that under root of R square plus XC square so finally we get ZP is equal to 8000 485 ohm or 8.5 kilo ohm. So we now have the value of the vector sum of the series impedance 17 kilo ohm ZS and for the parallel impedance is equal to ZP is equal to 8.5 kilo ohm. Therefore the total impedance set out of the voltage divided network at the given frequency is Z out is equal to ZP divided by ZP plus ZS so we get Z out is equal to 0.333 or we can say that one third इसीलिए हमें वहाँ पे one third output मिल रहा है ये सब calculation हमने क्यों किया ये जानने के लिए कि हमें one third ही क्यों मिल रहा है one one by two क्यों नहीं मिला one by four क्यों नहीं मिला तो ये हमें इस तरीके से one by three जो है वो मिलता है output then at the oscillation frequency the magnitude of the output voltage V out will be equal to Z out into V in which as so is equal to one third of the input voltage V in and it is this frequency selective RC network which form the basis of the V bridge oscillator circuit if we know if we now place this RC network across a non-inverting amplifier which has a gain of 1 plus R1 divided by R2 the following basic Beans bridge oscillator circuit is produced so this is the Beans bridge oscillator circuit the output of the operational amplifier is fit back to both the input of the amplifier one part of the feedback signal is connected to the inverting input terminal or negative or degenerative feedback by the register divider network of R1 and R2 which allow the amplifier's voltage gain to be adjusted within narrow limits the other parts which forms the series and parallel combination of R and C forms the feedback network and are fed back to the non-inverting input terminal. 
इन्वर्टिंग और नॉन इन्वर्टिंग टर्मिनल से कहने का मतलब है जो नेगेटिव होता है साइन ये हमारा एक एम्पलीफायर है अगर हमने इसको इस एरो को देखें दिस कॉल्ड एम्पलीफायर इसमें जो नेगेटिव है इसको हम इन्वर्टिंग टर्मिनल बोलते हैं और दिस इज पॉजिटिव को हम बोलते हैं नॉन इन्वर्टिंग टर्मिनल तो इन्हीं दो टर्मिनल के बारे में भी हम बात कर रहे हैं सो बाय द आर सी बीन्स ब्रिज नेटवर्क एंड इट इज द पॉजिटिव फीडबैक कॉम्बिनेशन दैट गिव्स राइज टू दी ऑसोलेशन The RC network is connected in the positive feedback path of the amplifier and has zero phase shift at just one frequency. Then at the selected resonance frequency FR the voltage applied to the inverting and non-inverting input will be equal and in phase so the positive feedback will cancel out the negative feedback signal causing the circuit to oscillate. the voltage gain of the amplifier circuit must be equal to or greater than 3 gain is equal to 3 for oscillations to start becomes as we have seen above the input is 1/3 of the output this value the voltage gain ab is always greater than and equal to 3 is set by the feedback resistor network so r1 and r2 and for a non inverting amplifier this is given as the ratio 1 plus r1 by r2 also due to the open loop gain limitation of the operational amplifier frequencies above 1 megahertz are unachievable without the use of special high frequency operational amplifiers So the example of Wien's bridge oscillator circuit determine the maximum and minimum frequency of oscillations of a Wien's bridge oscillator circuit having a resistor of 10 kilo ohm and the variable capacitor of 1 nanofarad or 1000 nanofarad So the frequency of oscillation for a Wien's bridge oscillator is given by we know that fr is equal to 1 upon 2 pi into rc abhi humne nikala so wien bridge oscillator lower frequency pe hum nikalenge so f minimum is equal to put the value of r and c 1 upon 2 pi 10 kilo ohm into 1000 into 10 to the rest to the power minus 9 so we get 15.9 hertz after this we can calculate the highest frequency so f max is equal to 1 upon 2 pi put the value of r and c so we get 15915 hertz now we can summarize the wien's bridge oscillators then for oscillations to occur in a wien's bridge oscillator circuit the following condition must be applied number 1 with no input signal a wien's bridge oscillator produce continuous output oscillations number 2 the wien's bridge oscillators can produce a large range of frequencies number 3 the voltage gain of the amplifier must be greater than 3 number next the rc network can be used with a non inverting amplifier the input resistance of the amplifier must be high compared to r so that the rc network is not overloaded and alter the required conditions number next the output resistance of the amplifier must be low show that the effect of external loading is minimized number last some method of stabilizing the amplitude of the oscillation must be provided If the voltage gain of the amplifier is too small the desired oscillation will decay and stop if it is too large the output will saturate it to the value of the supply rails and distort
with amplitude stabilization in the form of feedback diode oscillations from the Wien's bridge oscillators can be continued indefinitely. In our final look at oscillators, we will examine the crystal oscillator which uses a quartz crystal as its length circuit to produce a high frequency and very stable sinusoidal waveform. So this is all about the Wien's bridge oscillator. कैसे हम बनाएंगे वीज ब्रिज ऑसिलेटर फ्रीक्वेंसी कैसे कैलकुलेट करेंगे हमने एग्जाम्पल से साथ समझा है नेक्स्ट हम देखते हैं क्रिस्टल ऑसिलेटर से सो द नेक्स्ट इज क्वार्ट क्रिस्टल ऑसिलेटर्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स ऑफ एनी ऑसिलेटर इज इट्स फ्रीक्वेंसी स्टेबिलिटी or in other words its ability to provide a constant frequency output under varying load condition koi bhi hamara oscillator ho usko output output agar wo constant frequency provide kar pa raha hai varying load condition mein to wo ek bahut hi acha oscillator mana jayega some of the factors that affect the frequency stability of the oscillator generally included variation in temperature variation in load as well as change to its dc power supply voltage to name a few the frequency stability of the output signal can be greatly improved by the proper selection of the components used for resonant feedback circuit including the amplifiers but there is a limit to the stability that can be obtained from normal ac and rc tank circuits to obtain a very high level of the oscillator stability a quartz crystal is generally used as a frequency determining device to produce another type of oscillator circuit known generally as a quartz crystal oscillators so this is the diagram of quartz crystal oscillators When a voltage source is applied to a small thin piece of quartz crystal it being to change shape reducing a characteristic known as the piezoelectric effect the piezoelectric effect is the property of the crystal by which an electrical charge produces a mechanical force by changing the shape of the crystal and vice versa a mechanical force applied to the crystal produces an electric charge then piezoelectric devices can be classed as transducers as they convert energy of one kind into energy of another kind the piezoelectric effect produces mechanical vibration or oscillation which can be used to replace the standard lc tank circuit in the previous oscillators there are many different type of crystals substance that can be used as oscillators with the most important of these for electronic circuit being the quartz minerals due in parts of their greater mechanical strength quartz crystal is actually based kis pe piezoelectric effect pe based hota hai और हम क्वार्स का क्वार्स मिनरल्स का हम यूज इसलिए करते हैं क्योंकि उसकी जो मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ होती है वो बहुत ही अच्छी होती है सो द क्वार्स क्रिस्टल यूज इन अ क्वार्स क्रिस्टल ऑसिलेटर इज अ वेरी स्मॉल थिन पीस और वेफर ऑफ कट क्वार्स विद टू पैल सरफेस मेटलाइज टू मेक अ रिक्वायर्ड इलेक्ट्रिकल कनेक्शन The physical size and thickness of the pieces of quartz crystal is tightly controlled since it affects the final or fundamental frequency of oscillation. The fundamental frequency is generally called the crystal characteristics frequency. Once 
cut and shaped the crystal can be cannot be used at any other frequency in other words its size and shape determines its fundamental oscillation frequency ek bar agar humne crystal ko proper shape mein cut kar liya to uske baad wo particular frequency ke liye hi kaam karega dusri frequency ke liye wo kaam nahi karega kyunki iska shape aur size depend karta hai fundamental frequencies oscillation pe the crystals characteristics or characteristic frequency is inversely proportional to its physical thickness between the two metallized surfaces a mechanically vibrating crystals can be re represented by an equivalent electrical circuit consisting of low resistance r a large inductance l and small capacitance c as shown below so this is the quartz crystal equivalent model ये हम देख पा रहे हैं इसमें कि जैसा अभी हमने पढ़ा है कि क्वार्ट्स क्रिस्टल को दो मेटालिक प्लेट्स के बीच में रखते हैं तो इसका जो इक्विवेलेंट सर्किट है वो इस तरीके से हम रिप्लेस करेंगे स्मॉल एल एंड स्मॉल सी और आर को हम सीरीज में कनेक्ट करके इस तरीके से इसका इक्विवेलेंट सर्किट हम बना सकते हैं द इक्विवेलेंट इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट फॉर द क्वार्ट क्रिस्टल शो अ सीरीज आर एंड सी सर्किट which represent the mechanical vibration of the crystals in parallel with the capacitance cp which represent the electrical connection of the crystal quartz crystal oscillators tend to operate towards their series resonance the equivalent impedance of the crystals has a series resonance where cs resonate with inductance ls at the crystal operating frequencies this frequency is called the crystal series frequency fs as well as this series frequency there is a second frequency point stabilized as a result of the parallel resonant created when ls and cs resonate with the parallel capacitor cp as shown next is a crystal impedance against frequency so this is the diagram for crystal frequency the characteristics of the frequency for capacitive inductive and resistive load so r is equal to r and xls is equal to 2 pi f into ls we know that xcs is equal to 1 upon 2 pi f into cs and xcp is equal to 1 upon 2 pi f into cp hame pata hai ki xc is equal to hota hai 1 upon omega c omega ki value hamari 2 pi f hai value humne put kar di so we know that zs is equal to hota hai r square plus x square to hamare paas x yahan pe do hain xls minus of xcs ka whole square so finally we get that p is equal to zs into xcp divided by zs plus the slope of the crystal impedance above show that as the frequency increase across its terminal at the particular frequency the interaction of between the series capacitor cs and the inductor ls create a series resonance circuit reducing the crystal impedance to a minimum and equal to rs This frequency point is called the crystal series resonance frequency fs and below fs the crystal is capacitor As the frequency increase above this series resonance point the crystal behaves like an inductor until the frequency reaches its parallel resonance frequency fp At this frequency point the interaction between the series inductor ls and the parallel capacitor cp create a parallel tuned lc tank circuit as such the impedance across the crystal reaches its maximum value then we can see that a quartz crystal is a combination of series and parallel tuned resonance circuit 
oscillating at two different frequencies with the very small difference between the two depending upon the cut of the crystal. Also, since the crystal can operate it at either its series and parallel resonance frequency, a crystal oscillator circuit need to be tuned to one or the other frequency as you cannot use both together. So depending upon the circuit characteristics, a quartz crystals can act as either a capacitor and inductor, a series resonance circuit or as a parallel resonance circuit. And to demonstrate this more clearly, we can also plot the crystal reactance against frequency as shown in a figure. So this is the crystal reactance against the frequency. Xs is equal to R square plus XLS minus of XES square. So XCP is equal to minus of 1 divided by 2 pi into CP. XP is equal to Xs into XCP divided by Xs plus XCP. The slope of the reactance again frequency above show that the series reactance at frequency fs is inversely proportional to cs because below fs and above fp the crystal appears capacitive between frequencies fs and fp the crystal appear inductive as the two parallel capacitance cancel out then the formula for crystals series resonance frequency fs is given as the fs is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of Ls into Cs. The parallel resonance frequency Fp occurs when the reactance of series Lc lag equal the reactance of the parallel capacitor Cp and is given as so the parallel resonance Fp is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of Ls in brackets Cp into Cs divided by Cp plus Cs. Quartz crystal oscillator example, a quartz crystal has the following value, Rs is equal to 6.40 ohm and Cs is equal to 0.09972 picofarad and Ls is equal to 2.546 millihenry. If the capacitance across its terminal, the Cp is measured at 28.68 picofarad, calculate the fundamental oscillating frequency of the crystal and its secondary resonance frequency. So, this is our numeric value. Now, we will see the answer of the frequencies. So, the crystal series resonance frequency Fs is equal to, we know that 1 upon 2 pi under root of Ls into Cs. Put the value of Ls and Cs. So, we get the series resonance frequency Fs is equal to 9.987 megahertz. The crystal parallel resonance frequency Fp is अब हमने series निकाल ली इसके बाद हम parallel frequency निकालेंगे। so, The parallel frequency Fp is equal to formula हमने अभी देखा one upon two pi under root of Ls in bracket Cp into Cs plus Cp plus Cs. Put the value of Cp and Cs, so we get the parallel frequency Fp is equal to 10.005 megahertz. We can see that the difference between Fs, the crystal fundamental frequencies and Fp is small at about 18 kilohertz. However, during this frequency range, the Q factor known as quality factor of the crystal is extremely high because the inductance of the crystal is much higher than its capacitive or resistive value. The Q factor of our crystal at the series resonance frequency is given by So, the Q factor formula is equal to Q is equal to XL divided by R. So, XL we can know that XL ka formula hota hai omega into L. So, put the value of omega 2 pi F. So, Q is equal to 2 pi F divided by 
R put the value of L, R and F. So we get the quality factor or Q factor is equal to 24,966 or approximately 25,000. Then the Q factor of our crystal example about 25,000 is because of this high XL upon R ratio. The Q factor of most crystals is in the area of 20,000 to 2 lakhs as compared to a good LC tuned tank circuit. We looked at earlier which will be much less than 1000. This high Q factor value also contributes to a greater frequency stability of the crystal at its operating frequency making it ideal to construct crystal oscillator circuit. So we have seen that a quad crystal has a resonance frequency similar to that of electrically tuned LC tank circuit but with a much higher Q factor. This is due mainly to its low series resistance RS. As a result, quartz crystals make an excellent component choice for use in oscillator, especially very high frequency oscillators. So, our quartz crystal oscillator is our tune circuit we use in we use in high frequency इसको स्टेबल कंडीशन में यूज कर सकते हैं तो क्रिस्टल ऑसिलेशन ऑसिलेटर जो होता है वो काफी अच्छी क्वालिटी का ऑसिलेटर माना जाता है टिपिकली क्रिस्टल ऑसिलेटर्स कैन रेंज इन द ऑसिलेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी फ्रॉम अबाउट 40 किलोहर्ट्ज टू बेल ओवर 100 मेगाहर्ट्ज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन देयर सर्किट कॉन्फिगरेशंस and the amplifying device used. The cut of the crystal also determines how it will behave as some crystals will vibrate at more than one frequency producing additional oscillation called overtune. Also, if the crystal is not of a parallel or uniform thickness, it may have two or more resonance frequencies both with a fundamental frequency producing what are called and harmonics such as second or third harmonics agar crystal ko proper shape mein nahi kata hai uniformly uski thickness nahi hai to isse hamare circuit ke oscillation jo hain usme harmonics create hote hain generally through the fundamental oscillating frequency for a quartz crystal is much more stronger or pronounced than that of and secondary harmonics around it. So, this would be the one used. We have seen in the graph above that a crystal equivalent circuit has three reactive components, two capacitor plus an inductor. So, there are two resonant frequencies. The lower is the series resonance frequency and the highest is the parallel resonance frequency. We have seen in the previous slides that an amplifier circuits will oscillate if it has a loop gain greater or equal to 1 and the feedback is positive. In a quartz crystal oscillator circuit, the oscillator will oscillate at the crystal fundamental parallel resonance frequency as the crystal always wants to oscillate when a voltage source is applied to it. However, it is also possible to tune a crystal oscillator to any even harmonics of the fundamental frequency like 2nd, 4th and 8th and these are known generally as harmonics oscillators while Overtone oscillators vibrate at odd multiples of the fundamental frequency like 3rd, 5th and 11th. Generally, crystal oscillators that operate at overtone frequency to do using their series resonance frequency.
so this is all about the crystal oscillator the next topic is the references so these are the references thank you for watching this video